Common sense. You could tell she put that baby there. So, wait a minute. So, you believe just to get at you, she, she let him fall asleep and then put the baby yeah, right there to the picture? she texted to me and then tell me not to show him. If he knew about it... Watch the most heartless moments on paternity court. Now, after admitting that she might have slept with somebody else, the woman placed her solemn belief that her ex is the father of her kid and was given a surprise upon reaching the courtroom. Here are some of the most heartless moments on paternity court. Mr. Washington, you say the defendant, Ms. Steinhardt, was a two-night stand that went too far. And as a result, she's claiming you fathered her three-month-old daughter, Amaya. Got into a little argument. Well, the real reason is because she just wants my family. Because he you was, was with the... you. All right, he's not so with let's, you. let's talk one at a time. That's your position. Yes. You say yeah, that's not true, Ms. Steinhardt. No, that's not true. Nobody's jealous of her. Nobody wants her family. I just just want him to step up to the plate and take care of his daughter as we plan to. And this case is definitely unconventional to a fault, man. Now, it's two people against one. A man and his girlfriend bring his ex-lover, who's also the ex-lover in this situation. Now, they trying to prove that he didn't father her daughter. Me and my me and my fiance got into a little disagreement. And then we I went, I was staying at a friend's house and I met Teresa over there. Our, anyway, he said no. No, that's I a lie said, of your honor. Then we took it from there. We, yes. Okay, so, Mr. Washington, you were out there sneaking around with Miss Steinhardt and got caught by your girlfriend? What's going on with you two? He said they was broken up and the only time he deals with her is to see his children. No, no, I never told her that. I told yeah. her we got... You did not, you did not say separated. any of that. Separated. Stop lying. Like Never separate. So well, the defendant's the more believable part in this mess and the girlfriend's a bit vocal when she's the one being cheated on. All right. The defendant's the more believable part in this mess, and the girlfriend's a bit vocal when she's the one being cheated on. This brother hasn't even said two words since she's already defending him, claiming that it's her fault for sleeping with him, when we all know that it takes two to tango in this situation. Here's that. Says that we are in Let me see those pictures, please. All those it's pictures I already seen, I see them through Facebook. Y'all taking little pictures together? Right, on the, on the I bus. I have way more than that. Though. And another picture. <laughs> Let's hear from Mr. Washington. So you basically started a whole different relationship? Come so in. a sexual relationship, yeah. at least you did. Yeah. So you were having sex with Miss Steinhardt. Yes. With a picture of a pregnancy test on the social media page that said, oh, my baby father. Now, we all know he never said what he claims he said. No relationship is worth this amount of mess. But he was obviously not taking it seriously enough. But you know, she could also be lying, too. Yes, Your Honor. An eight-month sexual relationship. How many yes, months? Yes, it was. You're lying. It wasn't eight months. How many months? Probably like two or three. So, Ms. Steinhardt, were there other men you were seeing during that time? No, I was a... Oh, you, Mr. Mighty, you don't let nobody... Another man get birth. She had the guy all up in her baby's face. That was a family kid. member. No, you said that was your boyfriend. Let's get it right, shorty. Y'all confirmed that That was a that family member that... She said that was my boyfriend since 2012 or 13. They go right there. And so, they laid up Hello. with the... He all laid that's up That's a family the member. No, he has no boyfriend. No. And the funniest part that's not even funny is the fact that they details are not even adding together, which means that somebody's not telling the truth. So who's got more to lose, baby? Let's find out. See, why you letting him kiss up all over her? If it's, if it's Nobody was man's kissing baby, her. That's a you family ain't gonna member. Let another man do that to another man's child. Like family to me and my family. His, and if you go down nephew. her, if you go down her timeline on Facebook, you see her sitting in his lap. Do family members do that? She's pregnant. How does that feel? I didn't know she was pregnant to the end. Yeah. <laughs> I never asked for a DNA test. I fell asleep and then Wait, I you guess... were chilling over at her family yeah. member's house? Why? Because I got an argument with my girlfriend. Oh. Well, ain't that something? Another man in the mix and this defendant's been trying to keep it from the limelight. Now, there's been more than a few inconsistencies in these stories on both parts, but the only consistent truth is in the DNA. Mr. Washington, you are not the father. Oh. Thank you! with your life and your baby. She's beautiful, by the way. He's not the father. Do you know who her father is? He's her father, like... I'm not. She just said I'm not the father. I'm he the is father. not her I'm biological not the father. He's the father. only person I'm I was with. Father. I don't know the circumstances surrounding her concern. Now, man comes to court after his girlfriend went on a camping trip with another dude, and now he questions if he is her child's biological father. Ms. Carol, you say you are here to save your family. You are certain Mr. Parr is the biological father of your three-year-old son, Dawson. You say his denial has torn your family apart, and you were here a friend had texted me and asked if I wanted to go on a camping trip with her and two other people. Little 
I don't know, a couple of weeks or so. And then we had ended up fixing things and we had gotten back together. And then I just didn't feel like myself. After this camping trip, did you find out you were pregnant? Couple of weeks, I think. I mean, if it's been a few weeks, then you can't count on your intuition because it could be wrong. The only way to know for sure is to go and get the results. It, was it wasn't long at all. So it's your together. testimony that there was a result on the test so quickly, you felt like you had been pregnant for a while. Yeah. I ended up going to the doctor right after I took the pregnancy test. It, like My reaction at that point was I wasn't really sure what to think. I knew about the camping trip. I just, I didn't know what to think until they came back with the dates and they put those dates right on the whole weekend that she was on that camping trip. And then you said to yourself, I am not Dawson's biological father. Yes, I did. So, Ms. Carol, that's important information that you have not hammered home that the conception window was off. All right, I mean, that's a little confusing, and it does make one doubt her testimony. Well, at least she's being honest about the fact that there's a chance that he couldn't be the dad. I never told him he was the father, but he knew that I was pregnant and he knew that there was a chance. For yourself and for your child. Tell Mr. Power, what does this paternity denial, what does this mean? It just sucks. It hurts because I truly believe that he's Dawson's dad. And I want my son to have his dad there. He needs somebody there for him. He looks just like him to me. His nose, his eyes. Um, there was a point when we were... You know, you don't have to worry about it. It's definitely the guy from the camping trip. Her only certainty is how early the pregnancy test came, but that's not even completely valid. The man, on the other hand, has got a lot of doubts. Been determined by this court. Mr. Parr, you are not the father. <laughs> I'm sorry, you are not the father. I didn't think I was. No, that's not what you wanted to hear, Miss Carol. So Dawson's three. Do you have any father listed on his birth certificate? I mean, I would too. You know, going camping, that dude popping a tent, you know what I mean? Yeah, this couple been in court before and it wasn't a pretty sight. But they got themselves in the same situation again and her boyfriend is doubting they kid together. Hasten, Mr. Elston, you recently moved out of your home due to paternity doubts and you are convinced you are not Kaysen's father either. Ms. Elston, I'll start with you. You're in... And that this baby doesn't look like me. He's not mine. And questions about the conception. And he wants to leave his family all of a sudden just because of paternity issues. Paternity touch. Wow, it has really taken a turn for the worse. Leaving the house because of paternity issues is honestly a bit too much. Now, the last time they were in paternity court, they were in a relationship, but marriage is a hell of a lot different. Good. I still stepped up and was a father to him, so I'm just trying to get the honest truth today before I, you know, move on. I mean, you've packed up and moved out of your own home. It's you named something her. here that she's not telling me, so... We agreed on the name. I tried to. Oh, he Honor, told me he didn't want to change it. No, her friend chose the name, Your Honor. The truth is, even the name triggers you. Yes, Because right. it's so close to Carson. Because you already know Carson is not yours, which you stepped up, and I'm glad. So I don't understand how you think Carson is not yours. Well, what would be interesting to know is how he got his doubts. I mean, he ain't exactly a stranger to him, so denial's not an option here. Any little sign, man, this dude probably holds on to it. Just to take you to the hospital. So she said, I'll call my cousin and see if he can take me. So when I get home, like, we just started arguing because I told her this just don't seem right. These are text messages between you, Mr. Elston, and your wife, Ms. Elston. Ms. Elston, you say, okay, bet, Ladarian. Stop texting me and go play dad to somebody else's kids because mine, not yours. <laughs> But there you got it. They're toxic way of conversing. And of course, she's going to claim that she only said it to make him mad. And that might have been her intention. But now he's doubting the kid. The lack of respect is just destroying what they got. To that exchange, I just know how to push his buttons. Like, I wasn't trying to, like, I already know what to say to him. He had stayed gone the whole night. And he was out cheating and doing him. Mr. Elston said, blank, you dirty dog. And then Ms. Elston responded, that's the only reason I married you, Blake. You already said you had one child that was his, mm -hmm. came back not his. Mm -hmm. Now you doing this again? Yes. This is toxic. Yes. So if you're so quick to say... But you also can't go around running and playing that game, ladies. You can't take that back. Now, I'm glad the people of the public agree. It's toxic and destructive. Imagine admitting to cheating and expecting him to not have doubts. Now, maybe it's the truth, maybe it's not. I don't know, but the consequence is gonna remain the same. Admitted to a friend? 
Yes, ma'am. She, my friend came to the house one weekend. It's a female. And she pulled me downstairs when Carly was asleep. Miss Stanfield, thank you for joining us. Yes, ma'am. We're here today talking about the paternity of baby Kaysen. Uh, during the testimony, it has been brought out that... But I'm lying. So, wait. Answer my question. He was just stuck... Mm, okay. Answer my question. I asked... He still comes over every and day. And you've also told him he's not the father. Because I was making him mad. I know how to plead and act like everything is okay. That's the problem. <laughs> like this is the problem. It the was... issues that she needs to resolve. She gets a tiny sniff and bam, there she goes off, man, attacking everybody left and right. And all for nothing, too. She doesn't respect him at all, and it's gotten them to where they are today. As she claims she wasn't sleeping with anybody else, but only the truth can help her right now because ain't nobody going to believe her stinking ass. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Elston, you are the father. Kaysen is your little boy. But I'm, you know, I still treat Carson like he's mine too, so I, I don't show him no... You're doing an amazing job, and thank you for everything. I appreciate it. That's good, honey. That's a good start. I accept your apology, but it's still it's some things we got to work on. We can't wrap it up in a bow today. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. It's been too much water under this bridge. Y'all gonna float the whole house away. <laughs> no, really. And I hope this has been a lesson learned for you. We have counseling and resources for you all because you all got to start figuring this out. Miss Elston, you got to get yourself together, babe. Yes, ma'am. A really furious lady brings her husband to court for the judge to strike the bar of accountability on. Now, she claims her husband left her and her daughter right after her kid was born for the stupidest of reasons. Serenity. Yes, Your Honor. You claim your husband vanished four years ago after the birth of your child and has denied fathering your daughter and refuses to help you financially. Yes, Your Honor. The, I had to struggle to take her to therapy sessions, everything. He left us homeless with my newborn child, and he just vanished and left us. I'm not gonna sit up here and make it seem like I'm such a saint, like I didn't do no wrong, because so I if did. if you let him know there was a slight possibility, how do you stand before the court today and say you know he is? Why he's sitting up here making it seem like I was just out there, he was messing around too. Your Honor. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, her anger is pretty justified right now. Now, that's a pretty dirty move to make when you got a huge responsibility on your shoulders. And his excuse is just bad and inexcusable, man. Mr. McGee, you do admit you were in a sexual relationship with her. Yes, Your Honor. You do admit you were having that sex without protection. Look at that little yes, girl. Yes, Your Honor. So why don't you Look believe? Look at that little girl. I don't believe because not only her, then they could pay the other 75. Are you kidding me? Excuse me. Perfect in this situation. Yes, yes I cheated. But I didn't father a child. Yes, she did. So it's possible that yes, serenity is not mine. Last time I recalled, it was me, you, and a van. No, wait a minute, Mr. McGee. Let's stop right there. You say her mother told you that serenity is not your biological child. Well, the witness is in court to attest to what he said. Now, it sure is an interesting sight to see. We have a relationship and she talked to me. Okay, and so no, I do not believe that he's the father because I knew my daughter was out there and I knew that she had made mistakes. During the time of her conception doesn't match up with him being the father. No, you was not. Okay, so how dare you say, if he stepped out and I stepped out, how dare you sit up here and tell him he ain't my child's father? Well, Miss McGee, you do understand that we're dealing with the paternity issue relating to serenity. So if you did have sex with someone else unprotected, <sighs> Well, Your Honor, you're not gonna believe what I'm gonna say, but I'm gonna say it anyway. I believe that this my daughter's future fiance is the father of my granddaughter. Are you kidding me right now? That's what I believe. Fiance? Her. How you be married with a fiance? She now, he ain't got any rights to complain when he's been absent for not months, but years. And now the kid's almost five years old. Another man raising her because he's in a relationship with her mom doesn't mean you might not be the father, jackass. In the window of conception, unprotected. Yes, ma'am. You agree to that? Yes, ma'am. Do you believe you're Serenity's biological father? You know he left me my appendix in Russia while I was four months pregnant with my child. I almost lost my daughter. You know what he said to me? I'll be back. I'm going to the store. And you know I didn't see him so a month later. And I'm pregnant with your child. Don't be there one day and the next day. Don't. Be there consistently. Be there for her, not for me. You went to the store, Mr. McGee, and never came back for a month? If you had any ounce of this 25%, like you say, that she was yours, you should have been there whether you thought she was or not. You still should have been there. Don't wait till now. That's a lot of pain, but she's really brave for coming here to get the truth for her daughter.
and somehow this man still can't take accountability. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. McGee. Ha! Ha, 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 how you feel now? Bet you feel stupid now, don't you? Ms. McGee. You missed all them years. Ms. McGee, let's be respectful, because now we've determined that's your child's father. You know what? That's her, that, that's her father. You said it all along. I know, and I was right. And, and, and this is, I want him and my mother, my own mother. Now, how you feel? I feel mm -hmm. that I owe you an apology. Yep. I will give you yep. one. Yes. Regularly? Yes. Often. Very often. Without yeah. protection. Without protection. Remember me chasing her up and down the street, but she can't remember who fathered her child. Why am I living... Why am I living in her head rent-free, but she can't remember who... A Mississippi woman faces her past when she appears in court to find out if her sister's husband is her daughter's father. Hey, that relationship produced a daughter, but Miss Richmond claims you are not her daughter's biological father. Is that correct? Yes, you are. How does she end up having an affair with her sister's husband? Not thinking, just being wild at that time of my age and just not, just not caring about anything. I can admit to that. I'm trying to fix it for her now. What about Mr. Griffin? It's bad enough he's cheating, but his wife's sister? That's a new low. Wait, now, there wasn't no mistaken identity. Yeah, you knew it yeah, was your yeah, wife's I sister. Understand. No, I'm talking about, about me doing what I did. That's definitely a dishonest mistake. It lasted, I'd say, about two years. Yeah. Two years? About a year. I yeah. know a year. I know a year. This what? Two years isn't an affair or a mistake. It's a whole relationship. So, so for two years, you were sleeping with your wife's sister? Yes. Regularly? Yes. Often. Very often. Without yeah. protection? Without protection. That's just downright messy. How heartless could both of them be? But how are you all spending this much time where this type of relationship could develop? Because he was taking me home from when I used to go over to their house to visit my stepsister. He revealed he's been married for 10 years. I was in love, so I thought that... I thought what I thought was love back in the, that time. I think that's what, why I chose to tell him first before anyone else that he was the father. When she told him, he didn't deny her. He did this to the child. Up and he went up on the stairs and he, you know, put her up to the light and he said, yeah, she could be mine. And that was the last we ever discussed her, really. See? The daughter revealed she barely knew him. Yeah. That 30 years I've been knowing that she's my daughter. So you've never had a doubt? Never had a doubt. In 30 years? In 30 years. She admitted to sleeping with two other people during the window of conception. Two other men? Yes, Your Honor. Did you tell those men you were pregnant as No, well? Your Honor. With her still claiming it might not be his, why is he so sure? Because if, if it wasn't my daughter, why would the reason come she come and tell me that she was pregnant? He didn't get to be with her when she was pregnant because she was trying to hide it from her stepsister. Stepsister. So, Mr. Griffin, how did you tell your wife that you got her sister pregnant? I didn't because I was too embarrassed until I, you know, I did that. Well, I don't think any man would tell their wife. Here's how the daughter found out about him. And then we went to Albany when I was in the third grade and my aunt and my cousin say, oh, you look just like the Griffins. You look just like the Griffins. That's like what everybody always say. You look when she confronted her mom, she would deny it. She's like, oh, no, those not your people. That's not your dad. I don't know. That must have been really hard as a young woman growing up. They're, they're your links. They're your pieces to your puzzle when you figure out who you are as a child. Check out her apology. I didn't want to deal with my past, but I wasn't thinking about your life, and I'm right. sorry. A minute of silence for MySpace. So and wait, so when you first got the message, were you overwhelmed with emotion, or did you feel like it was a prank? What, what were you thinking? I, I just thought she was crazy because... <laughs> Can't fault her for that. Well, I was in my dad's room one day because my sisters was taking up the other mirrors. So I was in there doing my hair and I see some mail from Jackson County Child Support. And I began to look at it and I seen her name. She decided to go check her out on MySpace. She just kind of mentioned that we had another sister, but I didn't know what her name was. If he's not the father, how did he end up with child support papers? The we took a paternity test at that time, okay? I went on and did the child support, and she told me that, well, the test proves that he's not the father, so do you have another name to give me? So Here's how the DNA test went then. You from do. My, from my knowledge that, that I got the papers saying I was the father. You got the papers, and they said mm -hmm. that you were the father. Yes. 
How is that even possible? That sounds ridiculous. At Jackson County will lie when we call. Mm, they said they cannot. Go, I tried to get your the mom paternity just said card. right over there accepted that, that, that she had the test done. Yeah, I took they the said test. You and did I did. Oh, too. hold on. This is complicated. So did the test happen or not? I believe the other people better than believe in them. You. When I called them, they said that they do not have a test. Thank they you. said that um, From we took ours but he did not show up to take his. Her late husband also solidifies her doubts by believing she looks like the Griffins. I looked like some of the other sisters. So he was like, yeah, we should go. They didn't go, and that was the day he died. Um, so, I mean, I just, I was just so sad. He drowned in, in the line of duty? Yeah. She feels bad that her wedding day is his death day. It's her, okay. No. <laughs> Sorry. I just want to talk about my husband. I understand. Talk about. I understand. It's time to get the results. Of Griffin versus Richmond. When it comes to 32-year-old Tykea Richmond. Here we go. And by this court, Mr. Griffin, you are not her father. That is extremely shocking. 32 years gone. I'm just gonna have to help her find it because I've got names for her, so whatever I gotta do to find a father, I'm just gonna have to continue. A Virginian woman wants to prove her ex-husband is the biological father of her daughter. When you say that after a brief affair with Mr. Childs, you discovered you were pregnant with your daughter, Ms. Baylor. You intend to prove that Mr. Childs is in fact your daughter's father. Is that correct? Yes, sir. He admitted to having an affair with her, but also claimed she was involved with other people. Mr. Childs, you admit to the affair with Ms. Allen, but say she was involved with several other people around the time of conception. He, alongside his wife, claimed he's not the biological father of the child. And your wife contend that you are not Ms. Baylor's father. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Judge Lauren questioned Ms. Allen on why Mr. Child is denying her daughter. Um, his, his petty wife. She been Excuse doing me. that for years. She wasn't there when we were sleeping together or nothing. So I don't think she have anything to do with it. She claimed his wife is to be blamed, but Mr. Child interrupted as he disagrees with her. So you're basically blaming his wife? Yes. She, she should blame herself, Your Honor. What? Why did it take 20 years to get a DNA test you can get within a couple of days? Is to figure out that you should get a DNA you, test Because for I didn't need, I asked I you, didn't need to I go asked through the drama. The Again, I didn't need I to go through the drama. Right. With, with How did they even get all together in the first place? How did you all even get together? She was friends with cousins of mine. And we got together like that. We ended up messing around or whatever. Miss Allen had a different opinion. Then one day, I just came through after a football game, and, and he wanted to ride with me. And so we went on and had drinks or whatever. She believed to have conceived on the night after the football game. Is this the night you believe you conceived after yes. the football game and the drinks? Yes. She also stated that was not the only time they had a sexual encounter. The only time you were intimate with Mr. Child. We just did it like maybe a couple times after that. Okay, so this didn't extend for a long time. This no. is just a no. few encounters. Rumors? What does that even mean? And once you got pregnant, did you tell Mr. Child, I'm pregnant and I think it could be yours? Actually, it was rumors, so he came you to me. You the rumors. People come. They wouldn't even let each other talk. If I had family and I'm pregnant or whatever, but it... Why aren't you telling the truth? You didn't know who the father was. Well, you you knew that you from day that. one. You... What exactly is her argument? Yes, I told him, I said it's a possibility that she may so not be So you said yours. it is a possibility it, that she may not be yours. Ex she confirms to acknowledging his doubts. Exactly. So you acknowledge this doubt? Y yeah. yeah and, and okay, I, so I, Mr. Child. Let's hear Mr. Child's side of the story. It's just a moment that happened. So I even asked her, you know, once I found out, I heard she was pregnant. Hey, are you You supposed to be pregnant by me? I'll tell you what. If, the, if you're pregnant and it's mine, let's get a DNA test. We can go ahead and get this out of the way. Have no he claimed she never showed up after he opted for a DNA test. But she would have been my first. I don't see her again for months. Probably longer than that, Your Honor. So, Ms. Why wouldn't you invite the possible fathers of your child to the birth? When Ms. Baylor was born, you didn't invite him to the birth? No. Did you invite any other man? 
No. She claimed to have informed the other possible fathers of Miss Bayford. To inform the other possibility or the other possibilities that they may be the father yes. as well. You did? Yes. Okay. Why revert your statement in court after saying you might be the father? You say he might be the father. What you mean? How do I know that? <laughs> I had to go through the drama with Miss Johnson. Uh, up and down the road, she followed me. I can't she remember. Oh, snap. But she's not wrong. Why am I living? Why am I living in her head rent free? But she can't remember who fathered her child. A testimony was made indicating she had tested another man. How true was that? Daughter, the daughter told us that she had tested someone else. Why didn't you test him first? She goes ahead to shed more light. Why would you test someone you're not messing with? It's true, but that was somebody that I wasn't even messing with him. This was something that why are you testing came me? Why would you test someone you aren't messing with? Because this is, he, this, you know, she he, was fishing. He, he, Let's hear what Miss Baylor had to say. My owner asked me, and he said, you know, I was messing with your mom around the time. I wanted, I wanted to get a DNA test with you. She claims someone reached out to her requesting for a test. To you, yes. Miss Baylor, and said, I think I may be your father, and... I want to have a test. Yeah, I want to. I also thought he was never a consideration. Say this no. person was never a consideration. No, I, I told him that, but he was insisting on it. I was like, that is not, I wasn't even messing with you back then. Apparently, no DNA test has been carried out, not even with the other potential fathers. Had a DNA test with any of the other true potential fathers. Right. Okay. Judge Lauren questions if they've ever been told he was their father. To be honest, Yana, I was about 14 when I first found out uh, my sister's dad wasn't my dad. Finding out the father you've always known is not your biological father from rumors is just sad. Would come to me like, you're my cousin, TJ's your dad. I'm like, I don't know who TJ is. Who is TJ? And I went about it myself. I found him. She eventually found him on Facebook. And I said, Look, I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I do actually want to know. Well, that's what a good father would do. Well, Yana, and I stand a chance of being there. I'm going to be there. Yeah. I'm going to be there. You can ask it. We, we conversated. We talked everything. Miss Baylor stated who exactly told her he was not her biological father. Well, basically, my stepdad was telling me stories, and he said when he met my mom, then she was already pregnant with me. She affirms her stepfather told her the truth. When he told me, I was just like, I just started asking questions. I just wanted to know. Right. And I wanted so to get to the bottom of Now she wants to take the credit? After the fact when my stepdad did say that. Okay. No, she sat down and talked to me when I brought it to her attention. Like, Mr. Child had something to say. I got in touch with Miss Baylor, and I told her that I wanted to meet. He had to wait 11 good years before he could make an attempt to see his proclaimed daughter. That's terrible. She was, of any I met of her. this, too, you were 14. No, ma'am. I met her. I, I sat down and talked to her at Miss Allen's. I can't imagine how she felt going through all of these. And in my life, like, when people was telling me when I was 14, I'm like, I don't know. She do, Nobody she named remember, TJ. I don't did. remember him or he none did. of this. You know. There's not so much you can expect a nine-year-old to remember. You were only nine. And you old. don't remember him I at all. Nothing. And let me ask you this, Mr. Childs. It seems as... Was he just trying to see it through? Or he had questions? I just wanted to see it through, Your Honor. I'm saying like this, if it was such a struggle for her to raise her by herself, when we went to child, for child support, I would've got a DNA test. And this would've been taken care of years ago. I mean, when people start poking noses in your business, then something is wrong. Because Your Honor, with people saying, oh, you know Shah's your daughter. Oh, you know Shah's your daughter. I don't want people looking at me like, oh, you're a deadbeat dad. No, I know. That's a good question. Why didn't she ever pursue the child support? Why didn't you ever pursue child support? I basically was working and just taking care of her on my own. Maybe she didn't because she wasn't so sure he was the father. Just really knew that you didn't know for sure it was him. Well, it didn't It didn't even matter because I just been with kind of going through the drama it with her. You. you can't so say that. I went on with my life. I took care of her by myself. It doesn't make sense not to pursue a DNA test if there's a doubt in the paternity of your child. Alan, you never in the court system pursued a, a DNA test, nothing. No. no. All right. Yeah. He claims she just wanted to be the father by name and nothing more. Like she wanted me to be the father by name. So if someone asked her what? who Shy's father was, she could say me, <laughs> you know? Oh, not the flattery. I'm not being funny or anything, but okay, I, I, I was a good catch. I'm not gonna lie, I was a good catch. <laughs> so, so I can understand, you know, where she was coming from then. Miss Allen sure does a lot of disappearing. Um, she, she brought the baby to my mom's house one time. 
And I told her right then and there, look, Nisi, we can get this straight now so we don't have any problems in the future. She disappeared. Hold up. What did she just say? Doing other things. And I'm not saying I wasn't. And I wasn't, I, the only, I, I wasn't even I was the only, only one he was messing with. He was messing with my cousins and all that stuff. So. Is he admitting to it? Dude, with the child at hand, your honor. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, exactly. but at the same time. That's what I'm saying. If, if I've been we, going through, your honor. Well, a DNA test is the best solution. Through the mud for years, Nisi. How did I bring your name through the mud? I've telling people see my baby won't take a DNA test. How is that not running my name through the mud? Okay. He confirms having other children. Other children? Yes, ma'am. Well taken care of. She knows I would have took great care of this girl. Let's check out the first evidence. I have some evidence right here, y'all. Both of my kids are, are very tall and, and look just like me. All my kids look just like me. Judge Lauren confirms for more clarity. Yes, All of your other children have been born with a sick finger. Yes, ma'am, just like myself. That's a physical characteristic you share with them. Yes, ma'am. Is it just with him and his children, or is it a thing of heredity? Members of your family with this sixth finger. No, ma'am. I don't have it, but I found out later on <laughs> my dad had six fingers. Seems like the gene came from Miss Johnson's side. I've come from your side. It could have. But it was just interesting. None of us so had. interesting. Yep. They don't. So Miss Ellen is still convinced he is the biological father of her daughter. Are you still convinced that Mr. Childs is her biological father? Yes. You do believe. I, I I really do. What are her hopes after the results? What are you hoping? I mean, if if he is, you know, the father, I want them to have a relationship so at the same time if he's not then we move on that's that's fine with me no child should ever be made to feel like they don't matter about the past and what people do and what they did but i want you to know you matter you are all that matters in this moment let's hear what shinesha's hopes are basically i'm just hoping that i can just close this this chapter that i do have open in my life you know if it's not closing i'm uh i'm gonna keep trying to close the chapter that's right the results are in. Of Baylor versus Childs. When it comes to 20-year-old Shinesha Baylor, it has been determined by this court. Mr. Childs, you are not the father. She's one strong 29-year-old. It's okay. Miss Allen apologized to both the husband and his wife. To the both of you okay. for that. And we can move on. That's fine. I really wanted to get 14 years old. And she was running from one end to the other with a no, towel on and none. that he potentially couldn't be your son. Oh, no way, no way. This appointment was, uh, they said it was her uh, checkup for the baby. She, she Postpartum, your honor. Postpartum. Miss Marsh accuses her ex-boyfriend of doubting the paternity of her daughter, as he also claimed that his own father could be the real father of the child in question. Mr. Belding and his mother have made false accusations. You claim little Jordan's biological father may be your own father. It is also expected of Miss Marsh to prove the extent of her relationship, if any, with Mr. Belding's father. Uh, so you've also petitioned the court for a lie detector test for- Yes, Your Honor. Don't you think that the presence of Belding's father is very significant in this matter? Mr. Belding's father will also be joining us to respond. How was his father involved in this? It all started when he got to Indiana. Yes, Your Honor. Your own father. We were living in Georgia, shared a room with Amber. Excuse me, Your Honor, but his uh, sister lives there. Could have lived other places than with her. He's lived with her off and on for the past three years. Three years? That was a long period indeed. It seems she has something to defend herself with. Wait, wait, yes. Excuse me, Your Honor, it was with me and my mom. It was three bedroom house. We that never was the first the house. Room. Yeah. Didn't he have somewhere else to go? Okay, but I have to ask, Miss Marsh, out of all the places you could live. <clears throat> I'm not gonna let so, a man Bell. I call my dad <clears throat> stay on the streets. What other reason made Mr. Bedling believe that she was actually sleeping with his father? Just when I moved back to Indiana, there was a bunch of my friends that had said with Excuse me. Excuse me, Your Honor. She cuts in as she said that. Excuse no, me too, Your it. Honor. She's that's already had it. one man tested before. I told him not because to Because she told us that it was a I possibility have, to begin with. I have with. all the proof of this man right here. But the mother and son intensified their stand as they were sure of what was coming from their mouth. He can't do nothing with her. He's not allowed. She slammed the door in my face. So for them to be together bed, for a year, she must be sleeping around. Let's see how his mother approached this important question. 
All he came right. over with his friend Why and he was drunk. Why do you doubt? Why do you have so many doubts? She gave us the doubt because she told us very plainly she had another man, no fiance at the time. There was no one else in the room except for my mother. She made it clear that no man claimed to be her fiance during the childbirth, but his mother attacked her that she was lying. Your, uh, was your there a man at the up. hospital? No, he's he lying. He did not claim to be, be my fiance at all. I'm going to sign the birth certificate. We were all there when it happened. I, I haven't mean, been around her for two years. So you just said an that... hour and a half away, so they something. would stop. She her. needs to get her story straight, Your Honor. Trash. Mr. Bedling also made this important contribution, as he said something related to the birth certificate. If she thinks I'm the father, why did she have another man sign the birth certificate? There's no other man. Okay, on can this I say it's because she lies to us all the time? I'm looking at this birth certificate. Yes, ma'am. When did they even meet precisely? You all gotta make me understand this. Now, you all, so you all were in a relationship, boyfriend and girlfriend? No, not yes. really. Off, off and on. Let's get to know when she got pregnant. So it was off and on for Just years. sexual thing. It was after I had, I had moved to Georgia to live with him and his dad. His dad, dad did that. Zachary had, did, Zachary didn't want nothing to do with her. Him saying, baby, I can't wait till you get here. Could it be the father who requested her visit so that he could probably sleep with her? The judge needed clarification on this. Another reason why you think your father, he's the one that decided yeah. to have her come down. Yes. Yeah. Came up here and moved in with her and just left Zach. Because we just gave a homeless man a sandwich not even a day ago. Bedling believed another man signed the certificate. Because he believes everything his mommy says because he's a mommy's boy. No, she, she did. She's hallucinating because she was drunk when she showed up to the delivery room. That's a lot. Miss Marsh claims that his mother was drunk when she showed up at the hospital, but she denied it. That's not what happened. He was drunk for six the vodka hours. Her breath. You have to hear what was said here. Mr. Belding, you don't think you're Jordan's biological father, and you really think your dad is. She walks around the house half naked. Went to the trailer to visit him, and she was running from one end to the other with a no. towel on. He needs to give honest answers now, as his testimony now contradicts. He's told me they slept in the bed together multiple times. It was different rooms in your testimony early. Yes, we slept in the same bed, but not together. <gasps> see, now see, see who's lying. Your story your is changing. This is not appropriate at all, if you ask me. You well, think it's appropriate don't. for you to be sharing a bed? Why would I have sex with somebody? I call my dad. This is a lot to take in. I'm still not processing. But you know what? It is time we hear from his father. Hello, how are you? We are here trying to figure out... Kind of. I mean, there's always someone there to take care of the baby. He denied ever doing what he's accused of. How do you feel if your son is accusing you of being the father of Ms. Marsh's... I feel kind of demeaned by it, and I have never... That is my dad. That is gross. Here's his response to this important question. He's concerned that you're the person that invited... No. <sighs> he's lying. She further clarified herself by saying this. My grandma paid for me to go there because she knew how much Zach meant to me. It's a you lie to you, Your Honor. She dropped her off to me three times. The baby didn't even know me. I thought you just said I harassed you so much. Lie detector will actually contribute meaningfully to this matter. The court has administered lie detector tests, yes, and we will have those results. I can't seem to get answers to. Thank now, it's Miss Marsh's boyfriend's turn to say something, as he has been there for her in taking care of her child. I want to hear about... Who's helping you with Jordan? Your name is? Tyson Hall. I'm daddy. How long has he been with her? Two Your weeks, Honor? three weeks. And he said he is yeah, not to see her and, and she slammed there. the door in Zach's face. There is need for better confirmation as she claims she did not cheat on Mr. Bedling. You're saying Mr. Hall is your boyfriend now? Yes, ma'am. We never had sex. His I, best I get, friend was get... in the same bed. And oh, your but it was, was not on two the months floor. Ago. It was way before me and him got together. We and were... you two been together how long? Four, Four months. months. We need to know the kind of relationship Mr. Hull had built with Jordan. Please tell me about me. the relationship you oh. built with Jordan. Play with her. I play every day with her. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Ask Matt Belding. He's he lived, can testify that she's her. a hoe. It's getting out of hand now. The language in court is totally disrespectful. Oh, hold on, Miss. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. She don't know how to do it. Mr. Hull resumed his testimony by saying this. I'll always be the father. No, he won't. We'll see the DNA results. I don't care what the problem is, I'll always take it. Now, why was Mr. Bedling upset? Check it out. This guy, two months out of nowhere, thinks he's the father of what could be my baby. It Where have you been? I was just there two months ago with her. <laughs> it wasn't drunk. four months ago. But you slept in the bed with him. Things just got complicated and interesting. You admit that you shared a bed with him that evening. He's been or whatever's going on between you all. Well, yes, you're right. Yes. Honor. But he's not. He's not calling. He's not showing. I and did. he left that morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, because he was hungover. Now we're getting to the truth now. It seems we are moving closer to the truth. When you had him come over, 
No, he came no. over by himself. He knocked on my window. Like I do all the in time the to go see In the middle of the night. He, moved, he was there last week. We moved four, three or four months ago. You yeah. were gone and yeah, we moved without telling Yeah, because we moved because they us. Check out this lovely statement from the judge. I don't have a problem with a man that has enough heart to love a right. child. That's great. But right. you all tell two completely different stories. It's time for the results. Marsh versus Belding. Jordan Marsh. Mr. Belding, you are not Jordan's father. Thank you. The results continued as the judge revealed this. You are her father. Thank you. The paternity of a woman's son is in doubt after admitting to a six-year-long affair. Mr. Robinson, after a 12-year relationship, Brandon Jr. may not be your biological child. Because of the possibility, you may now lose your son too. Ms. Fuller also admitted that she was having affairs with another man when her baby was conceived. Ms. Fuller, you admit that you were indeed sleeping with another man. Yes, Your Honor. Why has he also asked for $100? To award you $100 to pay the fee to change Brandon Jr.'s name yes. and you have to move on without yes, him. Yes, Your Honor. Here's how he found out that the baby was not his. Six months. My son was six months. So you all were in a relationship? We were in a relationship. Respectively, we, we moved back to, I moved back to my mom's. It just so happened to be a birthday party also. I drop him off at his grandmother's where I thought Miss Fuller would be. And I um, call. No answer. He continued with this. I'm like, okay. So another day passed. I'm calling all day the next day. I'm starting to get these phone calls, but they're private. So finally, you know, after so many private calls in a row for so many days, you know, you pick up, I pick up the phone. And I'm like, no, I hang up. She called back and I was like, uh, okay, I'll meet you. The question now is, how did he know that he wasn't his son? How did you find out? When did you get that news? He asked me. He asked you on the phone or he said, meet me and I want to talk about it. He this. was wondering where we had been. For a week? That's shocking. Where was she? I had left to go be with the guy that I thought the other. When she called him with a private number, what really was going through his mind? That could be an issue. Why would you just disappear? Mm -hmm. Where'd you go? The child really looked like the other guy when he was six months old, and that was no reason for her sudden disappearance. Started looking like the other guy to me when he was six months. I have a picture. He's looked like he, he didn't look like neither one of us. Feeling guilty, my conscience was getting to me. Could she have lied to him? And and I lied to him like all this time. What did you say to Brandon Senior? We had to move, and I just thought. At the time, I thought it was a better move for me. I think she has taken this step due to the financial constraint at the particular moment. So the truth is, while you all start struggling financially, looking at your baby going, he does not look like this man. She knew about the secret all the while. She just kept it. He looks like the other man. The private number. You're bonding with oh, yeah. this baby. He has sacrificed a lot for the baby through his fatherly care and provision. Sleeping on my chest at night, real quiet, real mood, real... I, I know that move. So that's my son. That's all. He just gets so excited every time he sees me. Oh, all of, okay. mm -hmm. You can see that he loves him through his actions. That's the first time I held him and fed him. Until he's six months old. None. That he potentially couldn't be your son. Ever have thought that. Let's see what was on the birth certificate. Birth certificate here. You put your name on here? Yes, I signed. The baby was so important to him. His birth has contributed meaningfully to his life. I was on my way to some bad things. Brandon Jr. is three now. And then we had a falling out, like serious falling out. He had made an important submission about social media. Let's see how it went. She got on, on um, social media on my phone. I, I'm about to jump on my Facebook, but I'm, wait a minute, this ain't mine. You know what I'm saying? I'm reading these inboxes, but live with the guy okay. saying that. Here, he was trying to surmise the content of what he saw on Facebook. He didn't look anything like me. The baby doesn't look anything like Brandon Sr. About to be two in like the next month. So does that open the wound again? Definitely. Now, what action did he take after reading the message? What happened? I, I got upset, okay? I was like, read this. And I, I got up after that. And um, I went to the washer. Get out. But I'm like, leave Brandon. All right, so you putting her clothes outside yeah. the house. <laughs> so we're outside and we're, we're, we're yelling, screaming back and forth at each other. She met the guy again. Here's how. I met the guy a long time ago, like years ago. And we started seeing each other. It was off and on for about eight years. How long? It was like eight years off and on. Until what time? So my son is like, I wasn't supposed to have kids. 
And what would the calendar reveal in this situation? What do you have there? The calendar. A calendar. Jerome, please. This is a calendar that indicates the years in 2004, the other potential father. And you're with him all the way through 2000. She confessed to be with another guy, even during the time of conception. She's the worst. When we would get into it, when he would put me out during the time of conception, this other guy as well. What was the expression on Mr. Robinson's face? Could you believe he didn't know all the while there was another guy? Mr. Robinson, I can tell by the look on your face <laughs> you did not know this. There's a lot of blue going on. I didn't think it was another guy. Now, Mr. Robinson was in a state of confusion right away, as he finally wasn't sure of the paternity of the child in question at the moment. Now feel like there's even more of a chance? I mean, yeah, eight years, Your Honor. How was she even comfortable to have kept such a secret? Check out her apology. In court today, Ms. Fuller, eight-year affair, a secret. Please. I am so sorry that I did this to you. But it must be noted that the baby is already bonded with Mr. Robinson. Because if he's not the father, like, it's just going to be me and him. He considers him his daddy. Now, to the other guy. How will she explain the situation to him? No matter what, she still preferred Mr. Robinson as the father of her child. But how are you explaining all of this to this other guy? Yes, he knows. I wouldn't want him to be a part of his life, you know. It's just the kind you just want to go to his house every time you get in an argument. He is a good man. She doesn't deserve him. So the truth is, with this mistake, you could lose a good man. The question is, did he still have interest in Miss Fuller? Do you want to still be in a relationship with Miss Fuller? Your Honor, a relationship as far as what? Like our friendship that we have? We were supposed to get married in July. Okay, she didn't want to be with me anymore or whatever. I said, fine, I'm gonna come back. Why did she break up with him at the first instance? Yeah, yeah I would love. I did it for myself. You more than I'm loving me. Mm -hmm. So that's why I broke up with him. Like I need to get myself together and my life together. What about the $100 claim? Why would he have stated this as a part of his claim? Fuller. Now, Mr. Robinson, I want to ask you this. In your petition to the court, you want his name to be changed. That was said out of anger, okay? Is he now withdrawing such a claim? Are you withdrawing your petition? I don't want to change his name. Brandon, everybody call him Brandon. Brandon. So. Now, it's time for the results. As it pertains to the paternity, Mr. Brandon Robinson Sr., you are his father. <laughs> A man brings his unfaithful ex fiance to court, seeking to uncover the truth surrounding the paternity of her one-month-old baby girl. Opened your case today because you both say the defendant is a liar and a cheater and plan to prove that today. Miss Williard was also in court to claim that Mr. Hodges was surely the father of her child. Two of you testify for Mr. Hodges fathered your daughter. Let's see from his point of view why he called her a cheater and a liar. Explain to me why you think Ms. Willard is a liar. She cheated on me and I taught her with multiple guys. She said that she would never hurt me, lied to me left and right. How true was that? You kept lying and you kept cheating? I had a guy over at my house, yes. He, I didn't tell him because I knew he'd flip out. Here's how they met. I want to understand the nature of this relationship. A family member of his. We talked for a week or so. And then she cried on your shoulder and she got together. Why did Miss Blevins push her son to open this case? Um, because I knew that she had been cheating on him. He was hidden in her house when, he, when my son got there. In her mother's bedroom. Could that be true? Let's hear her submission on that. But, but your honor. So why do you have to hide anybody? Because she right. didn't want him to know. They were engaged by that time. She hid the other guy because she didn't want to fight. We was engaged. We were engaged. When your fiance came in the house, then you hid this other guy. Mr. Hodges has been deceived all the while, as this was just revealed to him. So you were engaged to Mr. Hodges? I feel like he has been deceived. What was his mother's thought when she first met her? She always kept her phone on her, and when she was on it and he would come around, she would hide it. Here's how the mother found out about the other guy. How did you find him? When Lillian was born at the hospital. Jerome, can you please bring me those messages? Yeah. Here are the contents of the message. I do understand my son was engaged to her and caught her cheating. Let me check the dates. Give me a minute. Broke up for good October 6, 2017. And you write back, looks that way. She needed to answer whether she was dating Mr. Hodges and the other guy at the same time. So Ms. Willard, he's given all these specific details to Ms. Blevins. Yes, I was with him at that time. Her mother threw more light by saying this. He's saying that because he wants my daughter. Right after Christmas sometime, she left my house 
with him. She was about five months, six months pregnant, something like that, maybe. Lillian, your only child? No, Your Honor. She was engaged before she met Mr. Hodges. How come? She hid that she had a husband before. She hid that she had had a child. Yes, Your Honor. Here's how she found out that she was pregnant. She called me and she said that she was eight months pregnant. I'm sitting there texting her every day. Come find out whenever we called her OBG checkup for the baby. Baby. Out. Another evidence was presented to the court. Check it out. May 27th, Ms. Willard says she's okay. Her lungs aren't fully developed. Doc is showing me a different due date. You ain't got nothing more to worry about. When was Lillian born? May the 23rd. May the 23rd. She really perfected the lie. Surprisingly, she didn't deny that she lied. Ms. Willard, this is too much lying. What is going on? Isn't born when the baby is born. Here's her reason for that. Okay, he's married now, and I just didn't want to break up a marriage. You told him anyway. I was with the other guy, and I thought I was going to keep living with him. Did she ever inform the other guy that he was the biological father of Lillian? So why not allow the man to be present for the birth? That was my fault on her. Judge Lauren Lake is letting her dig her own grave, as she wants to reveal the main reason for her telling those lies. Listen, and, and, and I'm, not, I'm not just uh, being hard on you. I'm trying to uncover what's going on. You wanted to be with the other guy, so you didn't want Mr. Hodges up there? She wanted to do a DNA test on the other guy first. Now that's another lie. She would reveal that the other guy wanted a DNA test, and she wants to give him one. Did you tell the other guy you said no? And then we found out he was the dad, and he was like, well, don't worry about it. How did she find out that he was the dad? Like him. This is Mr. Hodges, baby. We don't even have to do... Do they really look alike? We often examine physical appearance in this courtroom, how they deal with paternity questions. That does not prove anything. The judge wants to know if the other guy was tested. To understand is, did you ever test the other guy? No, Your Honor. You might be lying. He could potentially be the father. Okay, Your Honor. Do you believe this other guy? But he and knows that's why he asked for the DNA test. Yeah. What is she feeling at the moment? Miss Willard, I feel, I see your I feel hand. Like everybody's you jumping on me. <laughs> Everyone's against me. A lot of what's happening here. Yes, and I take credit for that. All these had happened due to her lies. What did she really want to achieve by this? You do tell all of the lies you tell? I just wanted a family. You can take your time. She must be pitied right now. She knew she had done wrong, or maybe she doesn't deserve a pity party. Because you out there just spinning. I have never seen that. <gasps> you are giving me great insight, Miss Champion, into what's happening here. Christina, I heard you. Check out what Judge Lauren Lake has to say. But it's not just about wanting to be a family with him. Now I get it. You're caught in this lie and that lie and this lie and that lie. I just want to know. You need to see a response to this question, as her response will shape reality. Do you truly believe Mr. Hodges? No, I believe it. You do? That's the only person I was with. What kind of a relationship have they built with the baby so far? We've been seeing her since we first found out about her. I'm spending time with her. I just want to know if this is my grandbaby. Before the result is revealed, here's how he feels at the moment. I feel betrayed. I want the baby to be mine. You're married to someone else right now. Being there with her just get attached. I believe I've taken enough testimony. Now, it's time for the results. Hodges versus Willard. Mr. Hodges, you are the father. You say the defendant is a promiscuous liar who broke your heart four years ago. You admit to having a one-night stand with her two years ago, but are furious. Ms. Bailey is now claiming you fathered her 11-month-old son, which you say is impossible. The is plaintiff, Mr. Dark, brings an action against Ms. Bailey. She has proven to be unfaithful. Jessica states Mr. Dark is a loser who must be the father to the infant baby, Jameer. We was in a relationship for about four years. Okay. Everything was okay. Everything was pretty good when I first met her. We had some good conversations about establishing us a family. And uh, I talked to Miss Bailey about almost every day. I was gone for about three or four days, you know, telling me how much she loved me, how much she missed me, and vice versa. Mr. Dark is visibly pained as he recounts the events leading to the discovery of how unfaithful his girlfriend was. When I left out of the door to go to the store, her best friend came running out of the door to like, hey, Terrence, wait up for a second. I'm gonna go to the store with you. Her friend started to tell me a story. She was like, well, I just want to tell you something. She was like, well, the whole time that you was gone, she was cheating on you. Her best friend yeah, told you that. 
A trip to the store turns into a heartbreak when Terrence learned his girlfriend cheated on him while he was away. Friend told me. Yes, ma'am. And I only did it because I thought you was cheating on me. Okay. But So you admit you cheated on him? I did. Okay, and so your best friend told on you? Yep. Miss Bailey, surprisingly, did not deny cheating, but her excuse is not as good as her honesty. We never stopped dealing with each other along the way. Even though we separated, we still occasionally seen each other every, you know, like two, three, maybe every two months, three months or so. Seen each other and had sex or yes, just seen each other still and said hello? Still was having sex sometimes, yes, ma'am. You have sex and you didn't use protection? No. no the couple may have split, but they never stopped having unprotected intercourse on the low. Judge Lauren is shocked by this fact. If Jameer's birth date is November 13, 2016, then, then that means the conception window would be February 17th to February 24th, 2016. Right. Mm -hmm. Although the couple had regular unprotected intercourse, Terrence is convinced the math doesn't add up. So what you're saying, Mr. Dark, is this doesn't add up? No, ma'am, no kind of way. So, with the calculation and the date she's right. using, Mr. Dark, you're saying this pregnancy would only been eight months. Yes, so, you believe she was already pregnant when you yes, all were intimate in she March. She had to be already pregnant. The conception calculator shows that Mr. Terrence might be right in his claim. Even with my doubt, because in the back of my mind, I didn't never want to feel like, okay, he really was my son and I didn't do the things that I was supposed to do as a father. I was there when he was born. The onesies and stuff that he took home, okay, so I bought why did for you them. Sign the the pampers. Terrence stepped up for the baby despite his paternity doubts he still stayed in Jameer's life. And the reason why I signed the birth certificate to answer your question is because you you told me at the hospital that if I didn't sign it right then, then no, I wouldn't I have it. He won't have your last name. You won't get to sign it. Did you not say that? Okay. Okay. Jessica seemed to have emotionally blackmailed Terrence into signing the birth certificate. Well, right. And you've had this same problem previously. Okay, but I made sure that I wasn't going to do it again. Like, I made sure that you was going to be the... Miss Jessica is the subject of a shocking revelation. This is not her first rodeo. Jessica can at least get an A plus for consistency. What else do you know about the paternity well, situation? Well, my due date is November 19th. My conception date is February 24th. Oh! Terrence's girlfriend comes to testify and claims her conception period collides with Jessica's. What you're saying is, is that you have a similar due date Yes. as the one that was presented for Jameer, as, as when Jameer was born. Okay, well, we're two different people. While this reduces the chances of Terrence being the father, it's still not a surefire way to know. Because many men don't understand that when they are in that moment, if they have doubt, they cannot sign a birth certificate, and I don't care what type of stress, duress, you can't do that. Judge Lauren gives the courtroom some solid legal advice. Because at that point, you are putting yourself on the hook as the father of this child. And there is no guarantee that a state will remove your name from that birth certificate. Never sign a birth certificate until you are sure you are the father. You have to petition. Even if today it is determined that Jameer is not your biological child, that does not change the fact that you are his legal father. It won't matter in law if you are tricked or ignorant. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Dark, you are the father. I told you that he was yours. The relief on Jessica's face is a strong emotion. And I have to say this to you. Yes, Ms. Bailey has made mistakes. Yes, she has had these situations before. But let's be clear, it could not have happened unless you participated too. The verdict also means that Terrence was unfaithful to his current girlfriend. So for all the blame we want to just put on her, really, this is both of your doing. And I want you all to take advantage of the counseling and the resources we have for you, because it's important that you begin to talk about these issues. Judge Lauren chastises the ex-couple to do better for the sake of the child they share. Afghan vet learns his wife cheated during his tour. You state that while you were out of the country serving in the military, your wife paraded around town with other men, and she has admitted to cheating multiple times. You claim you are not sure if you are the father of her third child, 18-month-old Liliana. This case has Matthew Trickeld, a military vet, claims he's a serial cheater. Consequently, he declares that Ms. Trickeld's daughter is not his child. You say you began exotic dancing to make extra money. Yes, sir. Because Mr. Threlkel's military salary was inadequate to live on, and that led to a few indiscretions. Brittany Trickeld, on the other hand, claimed she had no choice but to start stripping to make ends meet. 
You argue that Mr. Threlkeld treats your daughter, Liliana, differently than your other children and are hoping today's DNA results will settle the matter once and for all. But still believes that Matthew is the father to her child in dispute. Now, Mr. Threlkeld, when did you first discover uh, that your wife had been unfaithful? Actually, ma'am, um, I was overseas in Afghanistan, and I was at uh, up in the Northeast, and a soldier of mine came up to me and tapped me on the boot and said, hey, I need to go outside. We need to talk right now. Matthew had to survive an attack with the knowledge that his wife had become a stripper. His wife and my wife were friends, and she had found out that she was actually stripping as we spoke. And um, at the time, you know, I found out about it. I thought, you know, it was all just a hoax. So I went, you know, calmly to the, uh, the internet lounge, got on Facebook and asked her, hey, you know, is, is it true you're doing what I told you I didn't want you doing at all? He could not believe what his wife did while he was out fighting for his country. And um, right after I left there, our base actually got attacked, and uh, they actually turned off the internet for three weeks. So I was in the dark for three weeks. And then another two weeks after those three weeks went by, I got transferred to Bagram. And while I was at Bagram, I finally was able to get back online. And I get on Facebook, and there's this some clown on there saying, you know, you know, liking all her skimpy photos. Um, skimpy photos. You know, yeah. The veteran makes a shocking discovery. There was a random guy always on his wife's case. So I started doing a little bit of research wondering, you know, who this guy is. Mm -hmm. So um, I went to the phones and I called her and I said, hey, I know you're stripping, you know, that that I could somewhat deal with. You know, tell me about this guy that's going on. And she says, oh, it's nothing. It's just a friend, you know, et cetera. The she, of course, denied any involvement with the man, but that just made it more suspicious. He hacked my Facebook. He invaded my privacy and he looked into out. my stuff into my messages so, so that's how we found out what did he find there were messages yes matthew is not ashamed to admit that he had to result to extreme measures to get the truth but actually ma'am see she's gonna no. that's already a lie she actually i got on there and on the inbox that's i see not. i see oh baby i can't wait to see you later on tonight i had a great time with you i can't wait to see you know the last few days we've spent together it's been amazing these are and the messages yes ma'am however judge lauren is more interested in what he found than how he found it she says there was reasons why I needed to. Yeah, see, she says she need we she needed the funds to support our family. Overseas, yeah, I was do. making no. four to five thousand dollars tax free we... a month. Living in a four <laughs> in a four hundred dollar room. It wasn't even that much. Room. I'm guessing Matthew did not marry Brittany for her money management skills. Okay, Your Honor, there are expenses when you have kids. Um, the money that was coming in, let's just be real, it wasn't enough to support the kids. And on top wasn't of that- Wasn't enough to support the kids? How? Because I'm going to keep it real. Five have... grand a month. I had to tax have- Tax-free. Judge Lauren is once again shocked when Brittany admits she only had to resort to stripping because what her husband sent was not enough. He's finding on your Facebook and these indiscretions you're telling him about. This really shouldn't be an issue because in your mind, you guys, you thought your marriage was over. Stuff as it may be. Yes. Because you all had an argument about you stripping and you yes. hung up. Judge Lauren tries to understand why she would choose stripping over other jobs. We hung up and we said wow. it was done <laughs> because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. We, let okay. me explain. Okay, let now we're explain. getting to the truth. Okay. You wanted to do what you wanted to exactly. do. She does not give any convincing reasons. And as I was looking through it, there was a number that she'd called like 13 times. So I called him right back mm -hmm. and he answers the phone. Hey, you know, I said, who is this? Are you, are you the one that's my wife? He said, yes, yes, I've been. Oh. And Matthew clears any doubt he had about his wife's unfaithfulness when he calls a number on his wife's phone that confirms his suspicions. Why we're here for a fraternity court. Within three weeks of us being home, she was pregnant. So, I mean, I don't know if it was my devious, messed up head that got, you know, got her pregnant or the dude. Was. So... Um, that's that's the reason 100% why we're here. Matthew eventually came up with a plan to keep his wife in check. His whole reason for coming to paternity court is to find out if his plan worked. Now, Mr. Thrill, you asked your wife to take a lie detector test at some point, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. Before she came back, I said, look, you know, obviously the path we're going down right now isn't a good one. So I think for my insecurities, I'd like you to take a lie detector test. And she kept saying, oh, yeah, it's fine. I'll do it. You know, no big deal. Why don't but we when, need it comes, a lie when it comes closer to, to, to actually doing one. it, I was getting nervous. We she don't need a lie detector test. Out. We just need communication. There's no she reason. Tells me she Matthew has had it with the lies and requests a lie detector test. The couple doesn't need it when the wife confesses to not just one, but multiple affairs with other men. In the case of Threlkeld versus Threlkeld pertaining to one-year-old Liliana, Mr. Threlkeld, you are Liliana's father. Matthew turns out to be the father of the child. Brittany is understandably more relieved than Matthew about the outcome of the suit. It's always nice to have that child support money.
February 2011 to be exact when I found out. Um, there's not been a day that's gone by that I haven't let her not relive the mistakes she made, period. I appreciate your honesty. You were owning up to the fact that you would not let the mistake go. It's like we're stuck with each other. <laughs> Matthew and Brittany still somehow emerge with their marriage. They have come to the jolly conclusion that they are stuck with each other. The reconciliation is beautiful to see. The first is to prove that he fathered your four-year-old son, Antoine Jeter, and the second is to prove he fathered your two-year-old son, Kingston Jeter. This case escalates quickly. You testify that you may not have been a faithful wife, but you were a careful one. And you are positive he is the father of both children. Off the bat, Miss Fain admits to cheating on her husband, and she also claims she was careful about her cheating. Mr. Jeter, you are 100% certain you did not father either of her sons. You say your wife is sneaky and is pinning these babies on you only because you are still legally married. Is Mr. Geter claims she is using their marriage as a good excuse to pin him as the father of both infant kids. Ms. Fain's admission of guilt makes it hard not to see Mr. Geter's point. And it said her sister. And um, I know her sister's number and had a different number, so I answered the phone. And... Um, and the guy, he, you know, whoever it was, they didn't say anything. They got quiet. So, I, you know, I politely handed her the phone. And um, she, she, she's always very honest when she gets caught. Ms. Fain should at least be commended for her honesty. She showed up to her cheating ways easily enough. So, Ms. Fain, you were cheating on your husband. Yes, I was. Why? Pretty much I got married early, and I just wasn't interested in Drew anymore. So I started cheating. <laughs> Ms. Fain's reason for cheating seems to be that she thinks she missed out on many youthful adventures. All right, this was the second time. And you know, the, the first time is very eerily similar to the second. You know, I answered the phone and you know, the same thing, I took her the phone and... Mr. Geter's woes did not end with his wife's first unfaithful act. She told the truth about it. You know, we had our, you know, argument or whatever you want to call it. Then, you know, she told the truth. And you know, we worked past it. But so you work past it? Yes, ma'am. And then this happens again. The phone rings and then it's the silence. Oh, yes, ma'am. The separation was probably for the best. His wife showed no signs of slowing down her promiscuity. I don't want to take care of nobody else's child. I'm sorry, I Which don't. We was having sex, unprotected. Unprotected, but you also had the affair during that time too, right? Yes, protected. I was protected. Ms. Fain displays impressive dexterity in men by handling at least two at the same time. So how many different affairs did you have? Two. Two of them. And during the window of conception? It was around that time. Did you tell the other men you were pregnant? No. However, she does not prove efficient at informing a potential parent about a potential child. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Jeter, you are not the father. <laughs> Mr. Jeter has the most I told you so reaction you will see on paternity court. Miss Fain, do you know who Kingston's biological father is? Yes, Your Honor. It's the other guy. Has he ever met his father? Yes, Your Honor. He denied him also. It also seems like Mrs. Fain will have to pay a return visit to the paternity court due to the unresolved paternity issues. Once a cheater, always a cheater. Mr. Jameson, you've petitioned the court for a DNA test because you say you made a mistake signing one of the birth certificates and need today's paternity result to get your name off of it. Mr. Jameson has positioned a DNA test to clear his name and free him for the mistake he made. Miss Smith, you are positive the plaintiff is the biological father of your two sons and hope today's results will save your family. Miss Smith is out to save her family. She hopes her paternity results will help her do that. How'd you find that out? Because I went through her phone and I see she texting her ex and she's talking about, oh, I don't love him. He's just someone that's around. And so you confront her? I confronted her about it. What happened? She, she kept denying it because she didn't know. She, she didn't know I went through the phone. Mr. Jameson, after some investigation, found out his girlfriend cheated on him with two other guys. This is the same ex, yeah. So, Miss Smith, you got caught now. And what happened? We argued about it. Then he would go, he would leave and then eventually he'll come right back. She offered no reason for her cheating habits. In fact, it almost feels like she blames her boyfriend. There's, there's another guy. <laughs> a third guy? Yeah, there's a third guy. Who told you this? I found it in the phone. I found it in the phone. The, the phone. The you phone can't stay it. out that phone, nah, can I you? I couldn't. <laughs> so you found 
found it. Right. And you don't seem to be denying this. So now that makes me more concerned that what he's saying is true. Mr. Jameson teaches us one thing in this paternity suit. The phone will tell you all you need to know. But the question is, do you want to know? I understand we both did dirt. Me and Benjamin, listen, we both the, have the, done dirt the, to this, each other. The, listen, we have, dirt. but then we end up I, I right said, back listen, with each other. It's not about and, that. I no, know what so I it's like what I'm even, saying to you is you look over and I mean you are so emphatic when you say, you know these kids are yours. You know it. You know Miss Smith's views on relationships are not straight, going by how she treats her boyfriend. Astonishingly, she is insensitive to the pain she has caused her boyfriend. Are the father. You are the father. The next result is for Michael. Has been determined by this court. Mr. Jameson, you are the father. Thank you. Thank you. I'm relieved. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Mr. Jameson turns out to be the father of both children. You can see how much it means for him to finally be sure. What do you feel, Miss Smith? Because I'm tired of just going through so much with you. I'm serious, yo. We got two kids together. Like, I want like, for real. Miss Smith has some nerve to question his doing even after the results. All the mistakes. I just wish he would just act right and just try to do, you know, for the sake of them two. That's all I'm saying, for the sake of them two. The results seem to have calmed any comeback that he might have for his girlfriend. We've gotten ourselves to this point. We've gotten the truth. But I like that moment when you just said, I'm just tired and just had to have yourself a cry because it's okay to let it out. It, it has been obvious through this proceeding that she's done her damage and has contributed to this. Judge Lauren recognizes the damage done in this relationship, mostly caused by the girlfriend, but she reminds the whole reason why they're in court is to find a way forward for themselves and their kids.